makes me feel very humble this morning to be here trying to give a message to many here who have by their lives shown that they live for Christ. Makes our efforts be small. For from them we have received much inspiration in the years that have passed. Most people are changeable. They're as changeable as the weather that comes between spring and winter. They think of their sorrows and they're afraid. They remember their sins and they laugh. They look backwards and their hearts fail them. They look forward with great dread. Oh, that some crisis might come into the life of a man, that he might know just what it is that he really wants. In the Gospel, we read of a man who was beset with uncertainty, did not know whether to cling to the old or to speak the new. Then the crisis came, and for a time he failed miserably. But after that, he never faltered, but stood firm as a rock. The text this morning is taken from St. Mark's Gospel, the 66th to the 72nd verses. And I've divided this text into three parts. First, Peter was with the Lord in Galilee. Second, Peter said, I know not the man. And third, Peter was grieved and wept. In the days when Peter was a fisherman along the Sea of Galilee, he was already a king among men. He was eager for light, strong of spirit, or quick to act, always looking out on the horizon as though a miracle were going to happen, feeling a sense of challenge, but not being able to place it. Then Jesus came down from the hills of Nazareth. Now, how can we describe him? He was fresh in body and spirit from the hand of his creator. He had no thought or shame, and his face reflected God. Peter saw him and watched him and was deeply stirred so that when Jesus stood before him and said, Peter, follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men, the net dropped from Peter's hand, and he followed him. From that hour he called him master, and to that conviction he clung, and in that conviction he lived, until his one great hour of death. Peter walked with the master, first in Galilee. Oh, what wonderful happy days those were. Thousands thronged around him and listened eagerly to every word that he had to say. Those wonderful words, so fresh and so lovely and as reviving as a spring day after a long, dreary winter. Hundreds sat at his feet, those who were named and sick and blind, and on these he had compassion, and he healed them. There came also to him epileptic, lunatic, maniac, and those who were burdened with the awful cross of superstition. These too he healed. Peter, constantly with Jesus, saw all that he did. And he was stirred to the depths of his feet. So that when Jesus asked him one day, Peter, who do men say that I am? He answered from the bottom of his heart, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. All over the country, people are in church this morning. There are the young and the old. Those who have a greatness of the abundance of life, and those who have scarcely enough to exist. 
those who take the religion seriously, and those who put it on with their Sunday clothes and take it off quickly when they reach home. Those who are getting ready to live and those who are getting ready to die. But all come from when Peter came. All come from Galilee. Think back to the time when you were a child hearing about the Savior in Sunday school. Oh, how wonderful it was. You were like fresh, soft clay dressed from the hands of God. And the life of Jesus made a tremendous impression on you. You see, the pure attracted the pure. This made you what is said of Peter. You are a Galilean. You see, Jesus' eyes were filled with truth, and his mouth was one with saying, What hero is so great to you as he who so easily overthrew the proud and strong, and yet was such a wonderful kind for giving Savior to all who needed him? He was like a good carpenter. He always hit the nails on the head. You remember some of his parables. The one of the sower who scattered the seed so generously. Some fell among rocks and among thorns, and others by the wayside, and they perished and came to a miserable end. But all the seed that fell on good soil and was nourished by the wind and the sun and produced abundant food. And then the prodigal son, he who became bored with his life at home because it was too pure and too well conducted and left home to seek greater thrills. How he spent his time away in the far country, living a wild kind of life. And then how he became conscious of what he was missing and longed for home finally went back, perhaps to sit between his mother and father in church team. And the parable of the ten wise and the ten foolish virgins, those who filled their oil lamps and those who were not ready when the bridegroom came. These things stand out, do they not, in your memory? They are like Galilean landscapes. Yes? You were in Galilee. We may have learned to speak another language. For some speak the language of the sorrowful, some the language of the poor. And this poor man speaks the language of the indebted. Some speak the language of the proud or the speech of money. But you all come from whence Peter came. You come from Galilee. You have not forgotten your Galilean. Have you ever been in a crowd and you have heard someone when taking the name of the Lord your God in vain, all things that you hold dear, and you cringe inside and you say, I cannot bear it, I must flee. You see, you do not like the language of the court. You like the Galilean accent. And then a few years ago, a home on the Waltham Western Line was burned, and the family were homeless and destitute. They were not of our church, and we, some, just felt that they had to do something to help. So they went down off of the food and shelter, and those who didn't were bothered by conscience. And those who were not able to rejoiced with those who did that. You see, we are Galilean. For it is Galilean to weep with those who weep and to help those who have fallen to their feet again. You will never forget it. This story will perhaps illustrate a little bit of your language. Uh, 
young boy came over from Italy with his parents, and he was very small. His mother and father were killed in an automobile accident, and he was adopted and reared by an American family. They spoke no Italian, so it, the small smattering he had vanished from his mind. When he was a young man, he decided that he would go back and uh, see if he could establish contact with some of his relatives. So he engaged a passage on the big line. And when he arrived there, was met by some of his relatives. Well, at first, when they spoke to him, they, knowing no English, and he, knowing no Italian, was just a little bit difficult to understand each other. But as these folks showed their love through their language, he soon recollected some of the words he had learned in childhood, and before long was speaking fluently the language of his forebears. So it is with us, no matter how long we must be away from our Galilee, we will never forget it, for it is our soul's mother tongue. Yes, we were with Jesus in Galilee.